Flagstaff is another song from Parallax that I wanted to talk about, not just because you mentioned it as, uh, as one for which you have a preference. Tell me a little bit about where that song came from. It's a dark vision, you know, like a hallucination of a sort of uh, society or maybe like post society, like a post apocalyptic breakdown of society where maybe there's some sort of I, I pictured people in a desert with like some sort of ra- ra- rabies or something like you know people that were brain dead but were still like you know not zombies in the traditional like comedic right. Hollywood but it's like this sort of you know some sort of like virus or something that caught you know and epilepsy or something and you know they were chained to the ground on these sticks you know these p- posts and they were like writhing around and making these horrible sounds and it's the way it sounded just changed the way you you could even think about it. I mean you know have you ever seen a car wreck and you've never been able to look, look at anything the same I saw when I was a kid I saw my friend get decapitated um, riding a four wheeler and uh, it was Jesus. Yeah, it was in Greenville, Mississippi. It was after church, and uh, this kid was riding his four wheeler, and there was this guide wire that nobody t- that separated two pieces of property, but was invisible from a distance. And then his mother was, I think she'd had a couple of glasses of wine. It was like a picnic or something. And she, there was a rumor that his mother, I, I can't remember because I just remember not being able to, I didn't, I was, I just think that like, it's just a, you know, it's the, one of those memories that you don't remember how, if you were really there or if it was what you were told or, but the mother tried to put the head back on the kid. But, you know, when you see stuff like that, and it's, I, I mean, I could tell you a thousand stories like that. You know, when I was in the hospital, uh, when I was 16, you know, uh, a lot of my friends, I guess, were out, you know, getting their driver's license and getting laid and, you know, being stoned and drunk for the first time and, like, fucking on creek beds or whatever and I was in a hospital bed and next to me was this little girl, this little four year old girl that was, she was the daughter of an Atlanta Brave baseball player I think and she was swimming in one of those water parks and she can, she got E. coli and she just slowly died a miserable death for Three days next, or so many days next to my bed. We were in the same, and I remember my dad crying. I remember whenever I had a. I just remember all that, and these things they change the way you look. I mean, they 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 do change. I mean, people are always like fucking cheer up, you know, or like, oh, you know, learn to take it in stride, or like, you know. You know, la, 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 yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything will get, you know, people have this fucking ability, I guess, that I don't understand to, like, you know, ignore all the suffering or use it or exploit it and then turn it off afterwards or something. But not but some people don't suffer, I just don't suffer get, as much as other people. I don't it's know. Just a, it's just a fact. Some people's lives are easier than other people's. Well, that little girl, you know, and that that kid on that four wheeler, and just all you know, you know, when you drive down the road and you see a minivan that accidentally went off the side of the road, and like literally a woman's body is just opened, and there's just spilled out everywhere, like tiny like you know food digested food and blood and 
Oh yeah, I had a crush on a homecoming queen when I was like 17 or 18. I think I was a senior in high school. She was really nice. She was a Christian. She was in the, in the fellowship of Christian athletes. They were very clean. And she sat next to me in driver's education class on Saturday morning. You had to get up really fucking early and go. And they, sh- they, they had a folder they brought out. It was a manila folder. And it, uh, they said, all right, kids, you're about to get your driver. It was like the last day of class, you know? And they handed us this fucking envelope. And they laid it down on the fucking desk. And they said, all right, kids, check this out. Tomorrow you go get your driver's licenses. Congratulations, you've passed. Everyone in this room, you've passed. I just want to show you your possible future. Oh no, I'm afraid. And I sat next to the homecoming queen, who I was so in love with that like, I would like steal her pencil to smell it. <laughs> awesome. And I remember sitting next to her, and when the envelope came to us, she's like, I'm scared. Will you look at it? Will you, you know, like, we looked at it together because, you know, she didn't want to look at it. And it was a group of maybe, I don't know, 15 large, glossy photos of, you know, a, ch- a child that had been disemboweled after being thrown from a car, a guy who took LSD on October 31st, 1992, after a, a dance concert at the masquerade and jumped off the overpass on North Avenue and all that was the picture was of a tennis shoe full of like gel it looked like a tennis shoe full of like food or gel like cream pink and we said what it, what is this and they were like oh that's all that was left of his body is you know after he got run over by 25 semis, nobody knew it was in the middle of the road. They just ran over it. Ugh. And uh, the worst, I think, was a, a woman that... I don't know why the fuck they told us these stories when we were 17 years old. A woman had dr- just fucking... Uh, she t- put her kids in a minivan, right? Because her husband was abusing her. She packed her kids up in some of her belongings. And she was... Desperate to get away, so she was driving, and she and apparently the husband was behind them speeding, in a truck drunk. And uh, don't get a truck drunk, okay? In a truck, he was <laughs> driving the truck, and he was drunk. And uh, I'll allow you to edit yourself out there so that you don't <laughs> sound callous. And uh, the father chased the family. And ran them off a guardrail. Then he went off the guardrail, and two cars went over a guardrail. And the woman was pregnant. And when she busted open, the, there was like a little... And they showed the little kids, too. They'd been decapitated and mutilated. I guess, I mean, you know, why did I spend 30 minutes talking about this stuff? It's because that's a horror and panic and the sickness, you know, that people have on file. And I guess that shit, I mean, I don't know, you know, Flagstaff exists as this sort of vision of, like, the worst scenario. I don't know what it is, you know? I'm not trying to, like, say it's this or that. But Mm. it's just, like, there's something about it that's just, this is the end of it all, you know? Yeah. And this is, you know... Um, and then it goes into the sound, this accidental sound collage, which I feel like is just meant to just be some kind of therapy after all this horror, you know. That, that song in particular, does it feel to you like, I mean. It's terror, it's like a terror, it's a song about, song, song of terror. Right, but I mean, does like channeling any of this shit into any of these experiences that remind you that like you, it's not easy to just let go of of things you've seen or experienced, as people might say. Um, 
do you do you feel like you actually channel that into that into any of the songs, or does that just exist in this other realm uh, I, of you? I know that in that song, I, I I mean, I had enough time for that song to make sense to me. I made this lyrics up like all other lyrics. I, they came sort of naturally, but when you listen to your own song for a long time, you start to maybe understand what you're saying. So when I play that song, I mean, I get I get nauseous. I get sick to my stomach. Sometimes I mean it's a like uh, you know I don't care I don't give a fuck what the audience thinks of that song I don't care what fucking any journalist thinks of the song I don't care if people think it's just another song or it's oh this is like a bit of a folk song it's like fuck uh, you know I know what it is and if it doesn't fulfill people's aesthetic interests or something that's fine but. I mean, I, I I mean that song. I mean every song on this album except Mona Lisa, really. And I don't mean that I dislike Mona Lisa. I just mean it's like I would be lying. I don't believe in lying. I don't believe in bullshit. So you know, yeah, I can Mona say Lisa. I could say I believe in this album. I, I really mean every song. But I mean, I you know, Mona Lisa is sort of an exception. It doesn't really have a lot of meaning. It's sort of about not having any meaning. It's effervescence, you know. But yeah, I mean, Flagstaff is something I'm like. I really just. It's like you want to almost take the microphone and like just squeeze it and strangle it, you know, like, yeah. or take the tape machine and really fucking make it like, like make smoke come out of it, you know, like, yeah. I mean, you really want to do something for once that really does capture how you see things or hear them or feel them, you know. Right. I mean, that's I mean, it's almost like an explosion. Like you could throw up or shit your pants or you know like put your fist through a window or something 